Hi, Jeff Love from Alternative Heating and Supplies. I get a lot of calls of how I installed and how I mounted my wood furnace at my house. So that's what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to talk about all the things that I took into consideration before I made my final wood furnace home, if you will, which is right there. But I'll go through the processes in which I did, which it didn't, I've been burning since about 2000. So what I'm gonna go with you is the history of how I got here. So when I first got my first stove, it was actually a central boiler. And I took my dog, my, my dog bed and put it right where the central boiler was when I first got it. Uh, I basically took the underground insulation and laid it on top of the ground and went to my home, which is over here on my uh, left side, and it's about 40 feet away. But the reason I put it here was, first of all, I didn't know where I wanted to put it and I bought it in the fall like most of us do. And I, the ground was frozen like it is now. And I also wanted it so I could plow uh, in front of the unit uh, the, the front door of the unit was right about here, looking this way, so I piled my wood up right here. And then um, I would feed it, and that was how it goes. But I'm glad I didn't put it in, in right away. It, I did this for about three years, because I found out that this furnace right here, even though very easy to access every day, twice a day, it was um, badly placed simply because it got in the way of a lot of um, kids' activities, uh, if we had uh, gatherings or parties, always, it was always the center point, never always asked me what it was. It wasn't the best looking thing from the backside. So every year I would take it and move it with my backhoe um, and that's where, it, where I would put it and roll up the underground insulation. So where I'm going with this is, this is how I came to my final position and how I finally built what is what I call the carriage house for the wood stove. I took the time and the money and I dug into the hill and built a concrete foundation and a concrete wall to hold back the material and the dirt obviously and then I wanted to build a carriage house look. Now the reason for the carriage house roof is that it gives me more exposure to the southern sun which gives me a lot more heat which will help dry the wood and in here I actually have a greenhouse roof which will go inside in a minute and you're going to see how it works. So when choosing your location of your final location for your wood stove, if it's going to be in a shed or by itself, there's a couple things that you need to take in consideration. Air currents of how the smoke is going to react to your house. As you can see, my stove doesn't smoke very much. Um, if they're properly done and taken care of and it's a good quality stove, stoves don't smoke more than an indoor wood stove. One of the other things that is a pretty common question is how much power should I bring from my house to the woodshed and how many water lines and what should I put in the trench before I actually put my stove down. I ended up running a 12-3 wire which allows me to put a, a power box in there uh, so I can have lights, I have power to my unit and I also have a ventilation fan in there to remove any of the smoke if, if, if I'm loading the furnace. I also ran two zones of water lines. My house is about 3,800 square feet but not because I wanted to do that, uh, heat the whole house, because I can do that with just two sets of water lines. But I wanted to do it because I also have a whirlpool um, that I set up and I heat with my wood furnace. And also I wanted to heat my garage. I have a, a nice three car garage where I keep all my tools and my cars and my, my toys, if you will. And now I have more heat than I would ever need. And that's the reason I did that. So bringing that to your, to your thought process is what will you might want out here so you, when you're digging that trench you don't have to dig it once. Hi and welcome to my shed. So what I'm going to talk about now is how it was done inside the building and actually I'm going to turn off the wood stove because it is on. Okay so hopefully you can hear me better now. So the wood shed uh, as you can see has a nice greenhouse roof and it provides a nice lighting so when you're in here and it also provides shelter from the, the rain or the snow that might be happening outside or during the winter seasons, which is nice. And it's actually, the unit doesn't pen, you know, provide too much heat, but this building ends up being about 55, 60 degrees, so it's not really that cold. Uh, first of all, when I come into the unit and I feed the unit, what I will do is I'll first come over here and I'll hit this little timer switch which is, it's like a, a timer, so it, it turns on for fit 5, 10, 20 minutes, and then it turns off. So I turn that on, so when I open the unit, some smoke will come out, as you can see. Not much, but it also make it tolerable, so I'm not breathing in all the smoke. So I'm going to turn that off. Now, as I also mentioned in here, 
is that I wanted uh, plenty of lights. So here I have my light switches that have lights on the outside of the building. So when the kids are playing in the summer, fall, I actually have lights outside that shoot down. Also lights inside to give me more ambient light. And then lights also for uh, the plug outlets and everything else. So again, if I'm working in here or anything else, I can have outlets to use and everything else. This, the shed also serves as many purposes. I store a lot of my tools. Uh, behind you, we'll take a picture of my generator. That's it's an old military generator. So if the electricity goes out, I have plenty of power to run my whole house if necessary. The other thing I took in consideration is I wanted how much storage of wood in the building. In my case, I thought two years was ample uh, amount of wood. Uh, to me, I. Today, if I were to do that again, I'd probably change it and say just a year, maybe a little bit more, depending on how bad the winter is. So we've gotten past the wood aspect. Now, removing the ash um, with my door here, basically what I do is I open this door all the way and I open this door and I take a garden shuffle, as you can see up here, uh, and I just empty the ash and I use the bucket of my uh, backhoe and put it right there. Then I let it sit in the backhoe bucket for a couple days and then I dump it into my gardens. The charcoal and the ash is fantastic for the soil. Uh, it's a great thing to put into your garden. If you're burning some things with nails and stuff like that, try not to put that in your garden because that'll mess up your tiller and anything else. When I put the stove in, as I talked to you outside, I talked about the design of having one main beam going across the whole building here so I can take out this wall easily with just cutting some simple nails and I can just slide this thing out which will allow me to take this whole furnace out through here and I actually put the furnace in before the roof was in but in before the front was in so this was just the foundation in my case which I don't recommend is I didn't pour concrete but I put solid concrete blocks and then put the floor this way. And as, as you can see here, it, it, the amount of ash and dust and things that fall onto it, uh, it's, it's a constant cleanup thing for me. But if you left it dirt or wood chips, then there's really no cleaning to do. The things that you need to do to be careful when you get this much debris on the ground is if you're throwing logs in, charcoal and red hots will come out and land here. And you can actually see some of them where I actually will step on them and put them out. If I have this debris here, it is combustible so you can start a fire. So just be careful about what you do uh, to make your area clean so that if sparks do come out, you're not gonna create a fire. One of the other things that I found very beneficial when installing an outdoor wood furnace, depending on how many pumps you have, put a light switch, an external light switch on the back of the furnace where you can turn on and off the pump with a light switch. Okay. Well, thank you guys for watching my video on my wood shed and how I did it. And I hope it helps you make your life a little bit easier in deciding on how you want to place your wood shed or how you'd like to do it. But please feel free to uh, subscribe to me and I will keep the videos coming. I'm gonna to try to do two videos a month and keep all this information fresh and current as possible so everybody can figure out how to run these wood stoves. This is why I got into this business because when I bought it back in 2000, nobody knew anything about installs. They were just selling these wood furnaces and nobody really knew how to hook them up or do it right. So that's what I'm here to do and I'm hopefully gonna do that the best of my abilities. Thank you and have a great day. What the hell are you doing? Damn it. I'm getting ready for the next shot. Give me a break. I just need a few minutes. Don't, don't I'll forget be ready to like the viewers to like and subscribe to your channel. Hey guys, give me a thumbs up if you like us. Cheers. Stay warm.